a black eye at the company party. It is young engineer Ekengren's fate after tweaking his boss's calculations regarding the strength of materials. The next day, young Ekengren starts his own company, the engineering office Bertel Ekengren, better known as Eke. Bertel runs it together with his wife, Airi, from their Helsinki apartment. In the beginning, from 1961 onwards, Eke is known especially for structural design and strength of materials calculations. Ekengren is keen to find new ways to do things rather than ordinary solutions. Often, he makes the plans in one night. Word spreads quickly about this designer of progressive structural designs. Well-known architects want the creative engineer on their projects. In the 60s, challenging concrete structures are the focus. Ekengren designed structures for the VG building in Espoo, the Helsinki City Theatre, the Tampere Ratina Stadium, the Sibelius Monument and the Jatkasari Bunker in Helsinki. In the mid-60s, Eke dives deep into the world of IT. The company leases one of Europe's first IBM computers to their office, and it's used to calculate the hefty material mechanics of the Sibelius Monument. The computer is so special that other companies want to use it too. The IT craze cools down by the 70s when Eke expands its role, taking responsibility for the entire building design. Eke designs the Helsinki Exhibition and Convention Center, Messukeskus, the Wärtsilä Dry Dock, and the main building of the African Development Bank in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. In the mid-70s, an overbooked flight stalls the Ekengren couple's trip home from Moscow. After an extra night in town, Ekengren happens to meet Max Novak, German AEG's CEO. This lucky meeting leads to negotiations to build the booster pump stations for the aremburg chust gas pipeline from the Ural Mountains to the border of Czechoslovakia. The extensive plan to AEG includes 250,000 documents. They say yes to the offer. The value of the deal is over 40 times Eke's revenue the previous year. The project is a chance for Eke to show what it's capable of and a time to adapt to a new culture in the East. What follows is Eke's rise from left field into a known player in the Soviet market. The company works independently from the Exporters Alliance, who deal Soviet projects between each other in fancy restaurants. In the East, things move ahead at full speed. In 1982, Eke negotiates a construction project to build seven villages for maintenance crews along the urengoi ushgorod pipeline across Siberia. The signing of the deal is followed by a sauna evening. One of the clients leaves with Ekengren's fur hat, much to his dismay. His assistant points out that 21 more villages were added to the deal, making it a $150 million project. Enough for many new fur hats. Eke has 12 months to deliver 709 buildings for 28 villages. Self-sufficiency is an asset with this schedule. Eke Kont does precise work measuring the houses, so the elements built by Eke panels fit the 6,000 train carriages transporting all the pieces to the construction sites. By the early 80s, Eke is one of Finland's largest exporters to the east. At first, Eke declines a tender for construction work in the Tallinn harbour. In 1982, a Soviet admiral encourages the company to participate, despite the great and mighty competition. The opportunity is grabbed and the mighty players challenged. Preparing the tender goes deep into the night. Eke gets the deal for the partial construction work for a full value of 250 million Finnish marks. The dramatic events relating to the case are the number one news in Finland, putting Eke into the public eye that it has wanted to avoid. Conquering the East has been a success. However, Eke does not want to be too reliant on the Soviet market, as competition between Finnish companies is intensifying. 
focus is divided between the East, Finland, technology and the Western market. Welcome to the 80s, where there is great belief that IT, robots and automation are the future. The construction business is joined by Eke Automation. Significant investments are made and companies acquired, including one that manufactures robots in West Germany. Eke wants to do everything that is technically possible. In the tech fever, they even get involved in marketing space travel with the Soviet space shuttle and make an offer for building work of a space station. On the construction side of things, projects range far and wide. Interiors for a luxury cruise liner, renovation of Helsinki's Ateneum Art Museum and several locations in the Finnish capital's Empire Style Center. Eke also acquires land in Sundsberg, which will play a major role in the future of Eke construction. So, for the first time in the company's history, construction and technology operate side by side. The business areas support each other, since technological expertise takes construction projects to a new level. This is tested in the most challenging job Eke has ever faced building the Togliatti Design Center for Lada cars. In the 70s and 80s, Eke completes hundreds of projects in the Soviet Union. These include a medicine factory, congress centers and meat processing factories. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapses and Soviet trade ends. Soon Eke has made its way back into the markets of Russia and Kazakhstan. In 1992, Eke builds a water treatment plant in Kazakhstan as a turnkey solution. A new market opens and the country becomes Eke's most important export region through the 90s and early 2000s. Cheap black caviar, local champagne and playing cards. Just some of the things that the Eke workers get used to in Kazakhstan. There is also the local custom to give gifts. Eke's entourage soon includes new members, a baby camel and a horse. Since the Kazakh way is to give gifts as thanks for gifts, soon an airplane full of Kismet chocolate is flown from Finland to the children of Atare. The local economy has suffered after Soviet times, so Eke gets paid in crude oil. The pure oil won't be diluted with worse quality oil in the pipeline. To get a better price for the oil, Eke invests in its own oil tank fleet. Payment trouble also means the Toriati car factory pays the job with 2,000 ladders instead of money. The cars can't be taken home because of import legislation, so Eke sells the ladders to oil companies for oil. For a moment, Eke is an oil merchant. Soon transporting oil shifts to transporting timber with the company's tailored train cars. Meanwhile, Eke's work with high technology continues. For Soviet factories, Eke Automation develops the EkeNet data transmission system, which allows process equipment to be merged as one. In 1987, a young engineer from the Finnish railway company, VR, has the idea that the EkeNet network can be used for passenger trains. This proves a stroke of luck for the future of Eke Electronics. Specializing in train electronics begins and the Eke Trainnet train management system is born. Eventually, it leads to setting a worldwide standard. Eke Electronics goes international, starting from Great Britain with an additional boost from Queensland, Australia. A Finnish-born engineer who works at an Australian train manufacturer sees Eke's ad in a railway magazine. He appreciates the creative approach to marketing. The ad features a Finnish band, the engineer's favorite, the Leningrad Cowboys, a company that collaborates with a rock band. He is convinced. So begins the Australian phase of Eke Electronics, and it continues to this day. Besides Queensland, Train management systems have been delivered to Newcastle, Melbourne and Sydney. The millennium changes and the IT business keeps on going more and more global. 
Eke Electronics products spread around the world one train fleet at a time. By the end of the millennium's first decade, Eke systems are sold on all continents but Africa. Eke Construction keeps working hard in Finland. The Sonsberg area, acquired in the early 80s and 20 kilometers from Helsinki, is set to become a residential area and the Finnish Silicon Valley. The industrial park never gets the go-ahead and it takes 20 years for the plans for the residential area to be greenlit. Even that is the result of a resilient battle that involves hundreds of negotiations and compromises. In 2002, building begins. The plan is to create a garden-like district of wooden houses for living in the midst of nature. It attracts young families and is soon Kirkonummi's biggest growth area. When complete, Sonsberg is the biggest village of newly built wooden houses, done according to the new principle of low and dense building. Special effort goes into building a unique atmosphere for the area, bringing the traditional Finnish village idol to the modern day. Residents adopt this fast and refer to the area as the happy village to this day. Around the same time, Eke starts construction of single-family homes in Estonia and Latvia. In the autumn of 2005, founder Bertel Ekengren turned 73. He has a dream. One more construction project in Russia. A plot near the Pulkova airport in St. Petersburg is for sale. And the idea is to build a high-rise from which the Eke logo will be visible to every person landing. The plan to build a hotel becomes the plan to build a business center. Soon after construction begins, there is a bump in the road, the shape of the 2008 financial crisis. Companies cancel their planned office leases. Polkova Sky is hanging on a thread. Luck and skill come to the rescue. Work continues, and the site is completed in 2009 and 2010. Polkova Sky becomes St. Petersburg's biggest business center in the middle of an economic crisis that shakes the Russian real estate market. Instead of the original plan to sell the site to investors, Eke manages the center itself. Polkova Sky is a success. It is chosen among the best business centers in St. Petersburg, time after time. Ekengren's wish comes true. Landing in St. Petersburg, you'll see the familiar blue logo. Eke's principles were there already when the company was founded in the 60s. Independence, progressive technology and customer focus. The idea has always been to do something different from others. Eke has stayed true to its original spirit. The Sundsberg area continues to be developed by Eke Construction. In 2020, planning starts for a further business area, data center and new residential area, the latter surrounded by nature in Kurkirand. The company also expands to new living concepts. Eke Loft sells apartments as raw space and the new inhabitant takes charge of the design. Eke City offers quality and individual city living. On the road leading west from Helsinki, there is a new Eke landmark, the Loft House. Eke Construction has also finished several logistics centers. Eke Electronics has a new office in Shanghai. Now Eke Smart Vision expands the offering with preventive monitoring and train condition tracking. It's made possible with the acquisition of Humaware from Great Britain. Eke Electronics got a new partner when part of it was sold to Japanese Mitsubishi Electric in 2020. In St. Petersburg, the Two Centuries housing project was completed on Vasilevsky Island and has received many awards. Now, work has begun on the historically unique Sangali plot, where a hotel and three business centers will be built.